Okay, well welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Brian here at SeaWorld Orlando and today we have a sneak peek preview tour of our brand new construction site for SeaWorld Antarctica Empire of the Penguin. And today we have some big news for you. We are announcing the opening date of this epic attraction, the biggest expansion in our history. It will be, fr it will be Friday, May 24th, 2013. So be sure to be here for the opening of SeaWorld Antarctica Empire of the Penguin. And we are standing, more importantly, right in the center of Antarctica realm, if you will, in the center of the glacial rift. And directly behind me is the entrance to the attraction and pre-attraction and habitat spaces. So if you look at the rock work, uh, you'll notice that the large rock resembles that of a mother penguin looking down. And the juvenile penguin is starting to take shape in that rock work and form a, a, a younger penguin nuzzling down underneath his mother. And that's an important story beat for us about the love, the connection, and the care that exists between families of penguins, individual penguins themselves, and the community of penguins. And the story about how they're able to survive and thrive in the driest, the harshest, the most extreme environment on this planet. And our guests will have the same chance to experience those epic conditions inside of this world-class attraction, Antarctica Empire of the Pink. Going. Uh, what benchmarks are happening like right now? So an important benchmark that happened uh, about uh, 11 a.m. today was the structure code on the large, the largest piece of ice on the project, which is the, the south portal located by, journey, by uh, Sea Lion and Otter. So it was a treat for me to walk out here and see it. Uh, all finished and done, so I get, get excited about that. Uh, but also other big benchmarks include um, uh, what's happening behind us inside the structure itself. Uh, that is critical path to our project. All that work inside had to be done first, uh, allowing various teams of show, lighting, sound, architectural facility, and ride teams, and animal teams to all get in there and do the work they had to do to prepare this attraction for opening, this giant attraction we're constructing. Does that mean you have ridden something in there? We have vehicles uh, on property, so uh, we, we currently are riding our vehicles in the off-site testing facility, as we kind of outlined before in those webisodes. But uh, that we're allowed, we we can ride and go here. Uh, we're in a site acceptance testing right now for the project. What percentage of the entire realm is yeah, put a percentage on it. the overall project yeah. percentage? Look at these smart guides behind me. Right on schedule. Yeah, yeah we, are, we, are, we are very much so right on schedule, but um, it, it's different. Like the interiors are much more finished than the exteriors. That's purposeful. We had to get out of the building and out here last. That's why this looks more or less finished, unfinished. Because it's not, this is not, uh, this is hard work for us to do with the ice and the integration of fiberglass and acrylic and rock work all together. Uh, but the, uh, and the details related with these guys, what the sculptors are doing here with the penguin, uh, the penguin species uh, wall right here. But the, um, the insides are, are much more finished. Uh, yeah, so, so directly over to this side is, the, um, is a very important attribute of our educational uh, interpreter program for Antarctica Empire of the Penguin. Uh, most people know this, but they tend to forget that penguins don't only live in Antarctica, they live all over our planet. So we have represented here, um, I think that almost all of the species of penguins on the planet, I'm getting a nod, yes, it's all the species of penguins on the planet, um, including the warm weather penguins that live on the beach in South, South Africa. So uh, there's great species and great penguins, it's an amazing animal, and they live all over our globe. Just some of them happen to live in Antarctica as well. Are the penguins on site yet? Uh, the penguins never left site. Oh. Yeah, so the penguins, not this site, our property themselves, yeah. So uh, the penguins that were here before um, uh, will be coming back to this attraction. Those same exact penguins will be coming right back here um, for, for the opening on May 24th. May well before that opening, they'll be here, but before the opening. <laughs> Just to clarify, May 24th, opening for the entirety of Antarctica? Everything is open, and I get on a plane to the Bahamas. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, not to, not to design an attraction for Bush Gardens. No, oh, to go no. on vacation and fish. <laughs> if you want the detail. Standing in the midst of this, it's clear that other than the sounds of Manta behind us, we're not in SeaWorld so much anymore. I feel like we're in Antarctica. Is that sort of a new step for SeaWorld to have this immersive realm? It is purposeful on this attraction. Uh, so it was. You know, we couldn't move Manta, and we couldn't build something tall enough there to hide it. So, uh, but it's blue. 
so we, we justify it. But the uh, but yeah, everything else that is very purposeful. Uh, you'll notice on the site the old penguin habitat uh, in Plaza had various entrances kind of all over the place. Those have all been removed, and we have a strict flow uh, of how to enter and exit and move through the space, which allows us visual control over how much information we provide the guests and when we provide it to them. So we can unveil and unscript the attraction um, as we kind of wanted to throughout the, the walk-in to the experience itself. So. What is your favorite piece of detail? I have a couple favorite pieces. Um, um, outside, the thing that I, I like the most is I like Mommy Penguin because she's doting over her juvenile um, chick here, which I find very uh, quaint and amazing at this scale. To pull that, that emotion and that detail off in scale of inanimate rockwork is pretty significant, so I'm very happy with that. Um, inside, there's some, some areas of the, of the, what we call the show, but the ride experience inside that are truly significant um, and, and very unusual. And, and that gets me excited because I haven't seen things like that before, which is exactly how we design them. Uh, but, it, but it's all coming to fruition, so uh, there's some, some we're not going inside, so don't ask, but uh, there's some bits and pieces inside that, that uh, all of it's great. Just moments inside I like a lot. What do you hope for people to take away from this experience? Well, first and foremost... For you personally, like... I yeah, want me personally, um, developing a ride attraction that things that families can do together, our society and our culture is really... It, it can tear easily between uh, generations, uh, between uh, various adapters of digital or physical environments, etc. So allowing and developing an attraction that would allow that entire family to walk through there and all know they're going to have an equal experience and no one sitting on the sideline was critical, mission critical to us. I'm not saying no one. There are some individuals that won't or can't but um, or don't, don't have interest in it. But you know, we really have been able to really get everybody there, um, and so and, and in a physical ride that's highly unusual, and not uh, not bore the older kids and not scare the younger kids or, or you know or scare uh, the older generation. So to, to develop that together was a huge part of this project, and that's probably what I'm probably most proud of related to the theme park industry itself of putting something together that everyone can do as a family unit, um, and and the ride system really allows us to, to manage that process. Can you talk all at all about this area at night, sort of lighting package that you'll be installing? It's, it's relatively robust, um, and we've been doing lighting tests for about two years on the project, in interior and exterior, not here in different areas in cities and warehouses. Um, the, the, the replication of the ice was critical, mission critical to us as well. We wanted to have the ice at a proper scale. We also wanted to not paint a bunch of rock work blue uh, or white. Uh, the white you see here is our base color, um, and, and they're basing that out, and the plaster is white. But on top of this goes layers upon layers of different materials, everything. Um, I'm not going to tell you what all the materials are, because you'll, you'll get uh, it's not It's not necessary, but, but most importantly was the integration of how to replicate the ice and how it glows in the Antarctica sun. And so we did that with a new system of acrylics and fiber, uh, fiberglass materials uh, that are being made in what we call the ice box. And there's going to be a whole episode on the ice box, which is this warehouse that, with the giant refrigerator that we build these things in up uh, in downtown Orlando. But um, th that allows us to really have elements and mixed materials that allows the sun to pass through during the day, but at night it allows lighting to pass through at night. Um, and so we have a pretty robust uh, show system as well that allows our audio control and our score that we created for this outside realm and sound effects of storms to communicate with our lighting programming as well. So everything is really tied together and so we create really beautiful environments uh, at night. You're seeing a little bit of that sort of up there? You're starting to see it up there, yeah. Lots of conduits and things. <laughs> it's good? Are you going to take photos? You done with me? Susan? <laughs> no, you can't leave. We're good?